All right, so continuing from the previous uh, video, this one, I'm, I'm, we're going to generalize the idea. So basically, you saw that in the previous one, we just looked at the n equals uh, 2 case, so i equals 1 to 2. So you had w1 ft1 and w2 ft2. Now, generally, suppose that we wanted to actually extend that to more points and more weights, therefore. These Ws are the weights and the T, so the Ts are called abscissa, okay, in case you want to know. But anyway, this formula is exact for polynomials of degree 2n minus 1 or less, okay? They're exact uh, for uh, the fun uh, polynomials of that degree, okay? Uh, now, in addition, we notice certain patterns. If you notice that when I was doing W1, uh, uh, when we were doing uh, the first integral, minus 1 to 1 dt, okay? Let me just quickly show, you, show it to you here separately. So I, I did this, if you remember. Uh, no, sorry the constant one, dt, it turned out to be 2. Then when I did the next one, 1 to 1 uh, t, it turned out to be 0. The next one, minus 1 to 1 t squared, turned out to be 2 over 3. Okay, now if you look at that, actually there's a pattern here. When you have even powers of these uh, functions, okay, when you have even powers, so this is t to the 0, so t to the 0 uh, is 2 over 0 plus 1. If you put that in here, 0 plus 1, then that, give you, that gives you the 2. You see that 2 here. Now when we use the t, that's an odd power. So it's an odd function. And its integral between minus 1 to 1 is going to be 0. So that's why when k is odd, all of these are going to be 0. Similarly, we find that uh, when we put in the t squared, even power 2 over 3. You can see that here. Put uh, 2 in here. 2 plus 1 is 3, so 2 over 3. So this helps us in, uh, immensely by we don't have to calculate these integrals from minus 1 to 1. We know they follow a particular pattern. Not only that, but we also have the equations that we're going to get, uh, starting from k equals 0 right up to k equals n, whatever that might be. Now, what I'm going to do is... Uh, now, sorry, let, uh, before I go. After this point... There is a very interesting thing that has been discovered, which was that, which was discovered, sorry, which was that uh, although you can get a bunch of equations here, and as you saw, we had four equations, four, uh, four unknowns, four nonlinear equations, they were not so, they are not so simple to solve. And if, if, if I go further, uh, for instance, uh, we did t cubed, if I go to t4, I'll have another uh, equa uh, equation as well. So, you know, it's not necessarily easy to solve these equations. It can be quite challenging, in fact. So, along the way, it was discovered that the polynomial, uh, the, the, uh, these polynomials that we have, in fact, the t's, in fact, the t's turn out to be the solutions, the zeros of the Legendre polynomial. For instance, that's just one. So for this particular quadrature formula that we've been using, this one, FTDT, it occurs that, in fact, the Legendre equation, okay, the Legendre equation, which is something like this. So what, was, what, what happens is, it seems that the Legendre polynomial, which is the solution of the Legendre equation, it's a polynomial, and the nth degree Legendre polynomial, nx, the zeros, if we were to find the zeros of the, these polynomials, it seems that they, in fact, those zeros are, in fact, the t's that we have. So our t1, t2, for instance, for instance. So this is, this is the recursion formula here that is used for computing the Legendre polynomials. So here L0 of x is, in fact, uh, just 1, and L1 of x is known to be x. And so uh, we can actually substitute in, for instance, n equals 1 gives us um, basically 2 L2 of x minus uh, 3x. And L1 of x is x, so it's x squared plus um, n is 1. So we get L0, which is just 1. So that's equal to 0. And... Um, Okay, so if that's equal to zero, then that means that L2 of x turns out to be basically 1 over 2 into 3x squared minus 1. Now, that is the Legendre uh, polynomial 
degree 2. Now, the zero of this Legendre polynomial means that we equate this to zero, which means that if we solve this, we get... Remember the weights for the first um, quadrature we had with the two points, W1, F, Ft. Uh, it was F, 1 over root 3, plus F, minus 1 over root 3. What do you see here? Very interesting. In a similar way, this can be extended to the next uh, Legendre polynomial, the L3 polynomial. In this case, when you work it out, uh, it turns out to be equal to a half into 5x cubed minus 3x. When we equate that to 0, it tells us that x is equal to... So we get 0, x equals 0, and we get plus or minus uh, 3 over 5, square root of 3 over 5. Now, I'm going to use that uh, in the next quadrature that I'm going to look at, in fact. So I'm going to go one more degree and show you how you can actually use the this Legendre polynomial, in fact, to uh, do the whole job. Uh, in fact, and, and, and we can do it quite quickly. That's what I want you to see. So I'm going to, I want this here so you can see the, the information is here. I'm going to put it on the side so you can all see it. Um, now, what we're going to do is the following. So our next would be, if we want to go for the next uh, order uh, uh, accuracy, we did cubic. So if we want, say, a fifth order approximation or something of that nature, then we would go 1t t squared, t cubed, and t4. In order to do that, in order to do that, this means that we will start with our first integral dt, and, I'm oh, sorry, first, first, our formula, our formula would be, our rule, in other words, would be something like this. So the quadrature rule is going to be the one we have to find, w1 ft1 plus w2 ft2 plus w3 ft3. So that's our quadrature rule. So that's with the extra, the three points now and three weights. So in order for us to work this out, we will proceed by the following, the same routine as before. Okay, so that's going to be w1 plus w2 plus w3. But this time, let's look at our formula. So we have here, uh, t is, so it will be just 2, in other words. So this is equal to 2. Similarly, minus 1 to 1 t dt is w1 t1 plus w2 t2 plus w3 t3, and it's equal to 0. Negative 1 to 1 t squared dt, okay. So, <clears throat> so this is just going to be 2, uh, pardon me, uh, this is just going to be t1 squared, t2 squared plus w3 t3 squared, very simple to see that. And there, again, it's going to be 2 over k plus 1. Uh, k is 2 here, so it'll be 2 over 3. So you can see that this formula is really making things very, very quick for us. We don't have to work out the integral, even though it's an easy integral, still. Uh, as we proceed, and similar to the first one we did in the previous video, so this is for n equals 2, and this n equals 2, um, uh, basically, uh, where this is the n I'm talking about here, okay? So, uh, in general, it's 2n plus 1 is the order of the polynomial. So, in the previous case, when n was 1, it was third. Uh, the, that's why we went up to the cubic. Now, we have to go up to the fifth order. Sorry about that. I just forgot to mention that at the start. Anyway, uh, let's proceed. So, that means one more needs to be calculated. And that's what we get. So that's equal to zero, in fact, again. Now, this is a this is a big problem. If you look at this, we are talking about six equations and six unknowns. The three weights and the three points, the abscissae. So um, six equations, six unknowns, and this, these equations are nonlinear equations. They are quite difficult to solve. However, however, as we indicated here, this is where this Legendre polynomial, the zeros of the, uh, this idea of the, that the t's here, the t1, t2, t3, are in fact solutions of this equation, the cubic in here, okay, three point means that we go to the cubic, the third order Legendre polynomial, we look at the zeros of this, which are zero plus minus root three over five, now, these are the three, these are t1, t2, t3, the question is, which one 
is which. Well, we uh, remember so, uh, the, the minus 1 to 1 integral. We have seen symmetry in the previous uh, case, and there is, of course, symmetry here as well. Keep in mind that when we are, in fact, solving this problem, here's your 0, here's the 1, and here's the minus 1. Now, obvious, obviously there has to be a, uh, a mid, uh, the zero we've actually done is by identifying these three using this Legendre polynomial zero, uh, zeros, what we have done is we have cut down the problem. First of all, the nonlinearity now disappears because once we was, since we found the, t, uh, the t's, cert even inserting them would mean we'll have six equations in fact, which is overkill, and we have only three unknowns left. But the beauty is, now it's a linear system of equations. In W, it's a linear system. So one can use Gaussian elimination if required, but I believe it's not even necessary because it's just so easy to actually work these out uh, in this particular case. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Remember, if I substitute these values, T2 is zero everywhere. So the first equation, I mean, well, this is one and this is two. So in two, if I substitute in these values, I end up with basically root three over five negative, uh, and that's going to be with w1 plus root 3 over 5 w3 equals 0, okay? Uh, now, that immediately will tell you something very interesting, which is w1 is equal to w3, clearly. It's it's obvious. So, w1 is equal to 3, and, and you expect that because symmetry means that these two, if their the weights are different, the symmetry will be damaged. It won't be symmetric anymore, okay? Sorry, ignore the fact that this is too far away. It should be about here. Pardon me. But, I mean, it's symmetric, okay? I'm, my drawing is not the strong suit. Anyway, so so the, the, the weights would indicate that they should be equal. So W1 equals W3. That's also, but the equations say the same, give us the same story. So fair enough. W1 is equal to W3. Now, if we enter this, um, now, if we, we need to solve the problem, so if we go to this, this next equation, this third one over here, and insert these values of T1 and W1 equals W3, then what we end up with is basically the following. We get 3 over 5, okay, uh, W1, uh, okay, 3 over 5 W1 plus uh, 3 over 5 W1, because W3 is equal to W1. And that's supposed to be equal to two-thirds. This implies that W1 is, in fact, equal to five-ninths. Okay? So we've got our W1. Now, if I've got W1, this implies W3 is also five-ninths. Okay? Now, W2 remains. I'll go to this first equation here, this one, and substitute these values in. And that means that W2 is just 2 minus 10 over 9 which is equal to 8 over 9. So now order method, so we expect the accuracy here to be better, of course, than the previous one. Now, uh, of course, don't forget uh, here, we'll still have the same change of variable as before. That still applies, which is uh, connecting this to an integral a, b, f, x, dx is the change of variable. Still the same, b minus a, t plus b plus a as before over 2, okay? Uh, and, of course, then dx, along with this, you have the dx, which is uh, b uh, minus a over 2 uh, dt. So, using that, again, one can easily use this quadrature to produce another result. Now, to end this, um, okay, I have some endpoints that I will put in the next video, which are extra. They're not really required. Uh, depends on what level, uh, if you're in the advanced courses, uh, or where you're... Uh, going up uh, how far you want to go because there are other polynomials like the Legendre polynomial. This particular quadrature is called Gaussian, Gaussian, uh, Gaussian Legendre quadrature. Okay. And the idea is that this is not the only polynomial that happens to satisfy or, or enable us to get these quadratures. In fact, we find that any um, polynomials that are in fact um, uh, have, an, have, a base, uh, have a basis that form orthogonal polynomials, um, in fact, are, uh, can form
can also be the source of some quadrature. And that will lead, lead to, for instance, Laguar, the Gaussian Laguar uh, quadrature. It will lead to uh, the Chebyshev polynomials, and therefore the Chebyshev, Gaussian Chebyshev quadrature is also uh, available. And there is, of course, the Gaussian Hermite, or Hermit, uh, as you pronounce it, um, uh, quadrature as well. But uh, I'll leave that uh, for another time. Uh, this is sufficient for this particular level and we'll stop here. Thank you.